An approach to localizing sensory symptoms to the central nervous system. A 68-year-old female arrives in your ER with complaints of dizziness, hoarseness, uncoordinated movements, droopiness in her left eye, and tingling throughout the right side of her body. On examination, diminished pink prick and temperature sensations are noticed on the left side of her face as well as on the right side of her body. While observing her eyes, you notice left-sided ptosis and meiosis with a horizontal nystagmus that changes velocity based on the patient's gaze. The differential for sensory loss is broad. Knowing the anatomy of the major sensory pathways is key to appropriate localization, diagnosis, and management. This video will give you a framework for approaching a patient with sensory loss. Sensory pathways consist of highways that ascend from the cutaneous mechanoreceptors of the body, such as free nerve endings, Merkel disc, and Meissner's corpuscles, to the fourth order neurons located within the primary somatosensory cortex. Major tracts, including the dorsal spinocerebellar, spinothalamic, and dorsal column medial lumiscus carry different stimuli such as unconscious and conscious proprioception, crude and light touch, vibration, pain, and temperature. Let's dive into each tract to see which stimuli are specific to each one. The dorsal spinocerebellar tract, also known as a posterior spinocerebellar tract, is a lateral column tract that has no decussation, meaning it does not cross from one side to the other. It begins at two main types of proprioceptors, Golgi muscle tendons and muscle spindles, and will end in the lateral vermis intermediate zone in the cerebellum. The primary function of this tract is unconscious proprioception. The spinothalamic tract begins in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. This tract decussates at the anterior white commissure of the spinal segment in which it starts before traveling anterior lateral to the ventral horn of the spinal gray matter. This tract terminates primarily in the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. The ventral portion of this tract carries sensation for crude touch, and the lateral portion carries sensation for pain and temperature. The dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway informs the brain about conscious proprioception, light touch, and vibration. This pathway travels through the spinal cord's dorsal column and the brainstem's medial lumniscus. It decussates at the caudate medulla in the internal arcuate fibers before terminating in the primary somatosensory cortex. All sensory testing is performed with the patient's eyes closed or averted. Vibration is tested with a tuning fork and asking the patient to report when the vibration stops. Light touch with a finger or cotton swab and pain with a pin on both arms and legs. If you suspect a spinal cord disorder, it's important to identify the level at which the defect starts. You can test proprioception at the thumbs and toes and temperature with a cold metallic instrument. Once you localize the lesion, it's important to consider the etiology. The cause of sensory loss depends on the location of the lesion and on the severity of the presentation. Syndromes like stroke and trauma have an abrupt onset, while infection and autoimmune disorders tend to develop more slowly. Nutritional deficiencies, environmental toxin exposures, and neoplasms often have a more gradual onset. After conducting a comprehensive physical exam, it was determined that your patient's sensory deficits in the ipsilateral face and contralateral body likely stem from a spinal trigeminal and spinothalamic tract damage, respectively. Hoarseness, left-sided ataxia, and left-sided Horner syndrome, and the right-beating nystagmus on right gaze indicate a lesion in the left lateral medulla, consistent with Wallenberg syndrome. This condition often results from posterior inferior cerebellar artery occlusion. Management involves a multidisciplinary approach, including acute stroke care, risk factor management, and rehabilitation. Prognosis varies depending on the extent and location of the injury. However, the implementation of a comprehensive treatment strategy has been shown to markedly enhance the patient's overall quality of life. For more information on the anatomy and physiology of the sensory processing system, please refer to the section Spinal Cord Anatomy and Localization in the February 2021 edition of Continuum. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com neurobytes.